Hi, and welcome to episode 175 of the Heartland Knits podcast. My name is Vicki, but you can find me as Heartland Knits on Ravelry and Instagram. And today is Friday, October 13th, 2017. I know it's Friday. I usually record on Sundays, but I was kind of dressed up in a dress and had my hair done. So I figured I might as well sit down today. I don't think significant progress on my knitting is going to be accomplished tomorrow. I'm sure I will knit, but I don't know that it will look any different than it does today. Um, I have been knitting a lot, but I don't It's not going to look like it from the last time I started a sweater and then abandoned a sweater. I was starting to do a little kind of hooded, like zippered hoodie with that kind of bright blue, I think it was called Lake Blue Bartlett Yarns that I knit a sweater from last year and I complained about the whole time about my hands and and. I had to do a lot of modifications on the pattern. I took 20 stitches out of the sleeve because it looked too big in the pattern and it still came out way too big and I just don't have the heart to rip it out and and work on it. I'm I'm just thinking that yarn is going to go away because I just dislike working on it. I know I would love the finished project. I just don't think I've got I've got it in me right now. But I have been working on the other sweater that I talked about last time I recorded. And that is the Hellebore pattern by Michelle Wang. And this is, I'm going to try to put a little picture of it in. But I am using Brooklyn Tweed Loft in the Truffle Hunt color. It's this kind of a heathery brown. So there you can see this pretty cabled pattern. I just love it. I started it at a little bit different um, place. So I narrowed the sleeve also a little bit more than the pattern calls for. And then I kind of increased out um, in pattern. The really pretty part of this sleeve, it's a raglan that you um, sew together. But I love how she has taken this kind of little twisted stitch and then run it up along the edge of the raglan and all the decreases for the raglan happen inside of that. I think it's a really pretty detail and so that was a lot of fun to do. I've decided to do to do for the body, and I've literally just cast on the uh, one of the fronts of the cardigan. I am converting this to a cardigan. The original pattern is a pullover, but I've decided to do just maybe an inch of this cable pattern along the edges, and then I will. I'm not sure if I will do that up the middle or if I will just do maybe a garter. I'm not sure about that yet, but I'm going to try this little um, this little cable pattern for the borders of the of the body. This sleeve took about a skein and a half, so the other sleeve will take that amount. So that'll be three skeins, and I only have six skeins total. That's what's called for in the pattern, but. That's, I guess that's right because, um, you know, these are cabled and the body is just stuck and it feels off because usually I'm, I'm thinking that I'll only use a third for the sleeves, but I didn't want to add kind of too many cables, um, to the bodies because I don't want to run out of yarn. So that's kind of my main knitting. And I'm working that on, the sleeves were worked on 3 millimeter, and the body is going to be worked on 3.25 millimeter. That's how my, my, uh, the gauge worked up for me. Um, and my other project that is nearly done, I, I was hoping to have this as a finished project. I'm anxious to, for it to be finished. It is seriously one of my favorite projects that I've ever knit 
ever. And I love them so much, but it's half project. It's a thumb away to be finished. And that is my rose mittens. These are from this big book, this Mittens of Latvia book. And um, I think I, I, I talked about, I changed the, uh, I, I showed you the cuff the last time, but I have one finished mitten. And I love these mittens so much. And then the second mitten, well, I guess I do have to, I just have to pull the yarn through it. I, so this one is a thumb away from being finished. Nearly there. I am hoping for one more afternoon of nice weather where it's maybe in the 60s. The wind is not from the north or the west. And there is ample light because we had a we had a, kind of a warm temperature, but it was so dark and gray. It wasn't any different than sitting in the house and trying to knit this black yarn. So the majority of these have, have been knit outside on the porch. And so I'm hoping for one more. Um, you'd think the thumb that won't take that long. <laughs> it's a thumb, but these thumbs are, are, are trickier than most. The majority of it is with has three colors, which you have to, when you're carrying three colors, there's a tendency for the stranding to just get smaller than, than normal, normal when you're stranding with two colors. So you have to be really careful of that. And it's the black color. And then also, it's not just a pattern you repeat on the front and then the back or anything. It, 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 I, I made the thumbs so that they're like a part of the pattern. So it it when they're when the thumb is up, it still that rose still looks like a whole rose, and then the inside mirrors it. Um, I just I when I came to do the thumb, I thought, why well, you could kind of do it anything. The book doesn't really show you how to work the thumb. And you could do the whole thumb in black if you wanted to, or you could do another kind of a little smaller pattern. It would be easier to do it that way, but I love these so much. I want to make them as pretty as I could. The other thing I wanted to show you on these is our left and right, I did kind of change the chart. I didn't have to really rechart it or anything. I just followed the chart for this mitten from the left to the right instead of the other way around to so that they wouldn't both be sort of heading the same direction. But um, my beginning of my round, as always, mittens always need to be the beginning of the round on the side of the hand. So what I did to eliminate any sort of a jog on the side of the mitten, the has um, the pattern has you know, two on the front, two on the back for this first row. But then on the second row, you have to start the, the rows on the side of the mitten. It's, it's a half a rose, and then you come around and complete the other half of the rows. If you did that, you know, you'd get that funny jog. And you can't really do some of the jogless methods that you use for stripes. So what I did was I just kept moving over my beginning of my round, kind of over and over as it's hard to do this backwards. So as I, as this leaf kind of grew, the beginning of the round kind of kept shifting over. If you look really carefully right here where this rose meets this leaf is a little bit closer than where this one does. But that I can handle. That's just because this one is one sort of one row above it um, but then you get this nice unbroken line and this rose doesn't have a jog in it anywhere all of this yarn is fairy hair by Kim Croft except for the yellow which is a merino angora yarn that Lisa Sousa used to um, used to dye I don't know any indie dyers who dye a merino angora yarn. If you do, 
please let me know. Either comment or, you know, PM me somewhere or something because I love Merino Angora yarn. It's, it's just one of my favorites. And I don't know of any dyers that do, but she used to a long time ago. And I had a little bit of a leftover that I used for the yellow for the, the inside of the rose. I love these so much. I don't know if that green, you can, oh, it does show. So I love how this green is just slightly variegated, the tonal quality of, of how it was dyed. It almost looks like a real leaf would. They just have a, a small hem. And they are going to be super warm because the cuff is got four colors in the cuff. But the majority of it, of the rest of it, is three colors. There's a few rows in this leaf section that are just two colors. And because the stranding can be tighter with the, with the three colors, what I did was when I got to this first rose here, I shifted up from a size zero needle up to a size one because these kind of mittens don't have any gusset in them. To make sure it wasn't too tight with the three color stranding, I just shifted up when I did those three color sections. And then when I went down, I think on this one, I still stayed on that one where I started these leaves. I stayed on that one, but then I went, when I got to these, I went back down to the zero and then shifted to the one for um, the rows and then shifted back. So anyway, but I do have one thing off of the needles to show you and that is the shawl that I was working on last month. This is the Safira Lace Shawl by Anna Victoria and I used some Kid Silk Haze. So I'll show you if I can back up so you can see almost the whole thing. So this was two skeins-ish of Kid Silk Haze, and I'm not sure of the color, and I think I've, I'm not sure where the tags are, but I know I've talked about it, and it was, I bought it several years ago. I have these little beads kind of at the edge. They were kind of a, a a blend of different beads. I think they look really pretty with it. Some of them are sparkly and some of them are more matte. And did you notice anything? <laughs> there are two sort of big mistakes on this shawl. One is I ran out of yarn. Now I had the amount of yarn specified in the pattern. I might have shifted up a needle size and maybe that's why I ran out, but more probably, I have knit this shawl a couple of times. I knit almost a whole, um, I think twice, I knit almost an entire um, Boonitz shawl and then ripped it out. And as I would be ripping this out, it's Kid Silk Haze, if it broke or was snarled, I might have just discarded some of that and didn't try to try to pick all of that out. So I might have lost some while I was ripping it out. And I think I might have used it for to make one of those little birds that I had for my camp contest entry. So I might have lost some there. Um, I don't know. So I ended up 10 rows short, it was five pattern rows, but 10 rows total. That I, that I ran short and I didn't have the heart to try to do a, like a different shawl or, or rip this one back and try to change it. I did not add any to this, to this uh, top section. You can add something to this and then make it to uh, enlarge it. I didn't. When I was at that section, I thought I'm going to have so much yarn left over, but she makes her crescent shape, you know, in a, a slightly different way and I really really like the, how this shawl is shaped. It's just a nice gentle crescent. The wings of it aren't really long and it's got a nice amount of depth to it. 
I'm 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 very very pleased with it. It was nice to knit and interesting to knit. I especially like how he, she starts out shaping this top edge one way, and then as the wings grow, it sort of shifts out a little bit, which I think is really interesting and pretty. But I would recommend it. I think it's a really really pretty design. I like it in this solid very, very much. She shows a lot of her patterns on Ravelry in gradients. And gradients are pretty. I've done shawls like that. I have yarn that I'm going to do more in. But I think they can detract from the actual beauty of the design. You have to sort of look through the colors. Because when it's a gradient, you sort of look focus on the colors more and I think this design holds up really well with in just a solid color. I think it it's it's beautiful. The other thing that happened was if you might have been able to tell, I also ran out of yarn on my bind off. <laughs> So I thought I had enough, and if I would have been doing a regular bind off, I would have been doing enough, had enough, but I um, used a new bind off that I learned at Nitty Camp, which I love, and it takes a little bit more yarn than normal. So I, like I said, I was kind of ready for it to be done. I didn't even have the heart to take it back two rows. I just kind of wanted it to be done. So I had some kid silk haze in a just a slighter shade. I think one of these two colors was called pearl. I'm not sure if it was the lighter one or if it was this one. I want to say pearl and fog. Could that, I don't know. But anyway, so you can see it's just slightly lighter that I used to bind off. And this bind off is so incredibly stretchy. Um, I really, really love it. So Meg taught this to us and she attributed it to the lace designer Bridget Roram, who is very talented. She, she designs lace stitches. She doesn't just put kind of lace patterns together into a design for a shawl or something. She designs the lace patterns that she wants to use. So she's very, very talented and she designed this, or she came up with this really nice stretchy lace edge. I could tell right away when I was doing this that I really liked it. And so I sort of, I was sitting out on the porch knitting and I sort of just sat down on the ground and slid my iPad kind of over the side of the table and did a quick and dirty little video showing you how to do it because I know you want to do this because I love it. And um, so I'm gonna throw that in here. It's about three, four minutes maybe. It's um, not professional or anything. I'm, I'm just kind of sitting on the floor and I'm. Um, you'll see that I sort of keep bringing my hands closer to me and then I'll like shove them back out because so that to make sure they get in the middle of the frame. So let me put that in here. So today I want to show you how to work this cast off for lace knitting that makes this very pretty little edge. I love all these little loops. This has not been blocked yet so I plan to put the blocking wires through each of the loops. Maybe they'll get even more pronounced but this is what the back side looks like and it's very very stretchy. So to work it, it's pretty easy. And I'm just recording this with my iPad, so if it goes in and out of focus, I do apologize for that, but it's what I had right here. So to start, you yarn over onto your right needle, and then you purl three together. Now I'm going to yarn over onto the left needle and I'm going to knit these two stitches together through um, kind of the knitting back backwards way. So yarn over onto your right needle, purl three together. Now 
If you don't want to do the knitting back backwards thing, you can turn your knitting for these two stitches. It's I find it kind of annoying. And do that same thing. You know, yarn over and purl these two together. So I'll show you both of those ways. Um, I would be annoyed if I had to turn my work every time. So I knit back backwards. It's a it's a good thing to learn if you so yarn over, purl three together, and then yarn over onto the left needle. And if you've never learned how to knit back backwards, and you're not sure, do I put my needle in like this? Do I put it in like this? Not exactly sure. You can always just turn your work and put your needle in as if to purl and then turn it back to say, oh, okay, so I go in like that. And then if you're not sure, do I go around this way? Do I go around this way? You can do the same thing. You can go back and forth because you can teach it to yourself. You don't have to, if, you know, you don't have to run to YouTube every time. I lost where my. <laughs> um, you've got the needles, you've got needles and, and yarn in your hand, so you can see. Okay, I when I purl, I bring it around like that. What does that look like from the front? And you can sort of teach yourself. Um, so I'm gonna do both of those together. So yarn over, purl three together, yarn around the left hand needle, and knit those two together from right needle to left needle. And that's all it is. Those yarn overs make those nice little loops. And I think it's very, very pretty. Again, this is uh, something that Bridget Roram, the very talented lace designer, came up with. And, yeah. So, yeah, it's a really nice and easy way of, of doing a nice stretchy bind off. And you can see what it looked like before I... I uh, put blocking wires through it and blocked it. It was it was really pretty and they just came, became a little bit more pronounced. If you didn't want them this pronounced, so maybe the next time I will kind of experiment and, and use a needle one size smaller than what I had been using, I don't know. Um, but anyway, I I really, really love this bind off. I, I can see there's a, there's a matching cast on that looks like this. And so the next shawl that I want to do, I want to start at the bottom and work up so that I can use that cast off. Somehow when I do a project with a, with a, a new technique, then it stays in my head better than if I just kind of learn something at camp and then kind of I will forget about it. Uh, more easily. Yeah, this is the Sephira Lace Pattern by Anna Victoria. Do check out her patterns. I think they are lovely, lovely patterns. So for show and tell, I only have one little thing to, to show you. Um, and that is something that a friend of mine sent to me, and it just makes me giggle every time I look at it. Maybe you've seen these before. I hadn't. So she sent me this tape measure that looks like a French macaron. I just love it so much because I kind of pull it out with my right hand and the centimeters are on that side um, with kind of big numbers. One of the, when I was doing that Japanese sweater, it was all in, in a metric and um, I usually use a, I usually use a, a straight edge ruler which has tiny little centimeter markings because it's old. Um, I think I had it, I've had that since I was in grade school. But um, this will be great for any of those kind of patterns after that. So 
in the beginning I talked about this is Friday and I'm dressed up so I thought I might as well sit down and record and that is because I'm going to be singing at a funeral um, in a couple hours my high school chorus teacher passed away this week. They put out a call on Facebook. They created a special little Facebook group for anybody who wanted to, any alumni who wanted to sing in a chorus for her funeral um, that they wanted to get a group together. And she was a very inspiring woman for a lot of people. There was a group of maybe 40 of us. Um, I think she can I think her first year there was when I was a freshman in high school. So I'm on the older end of the of the uh, age group, but um, I think there were about forty who came, and one of the students is directing. Um, one woman came from New York City. She um, teaches music there, and she flew in and there was a couple people I heard talking. I don't I didn't know who they were, but they, you know, flew to Minneapolis and then a group of them drove over and um and that's and they're going to do a live stream just for this Facebook group. They have permission from the family, of course, for all the other, you know, people who live kind of widespread across the country. I'm sure they'll be singing along with us. I haven't sung in a chorus for since high school <laughs> I haven't sung in a chorus but and it was funny because there were so many that um my my best friend from high school lives here and she is very active in sort of the music um community here and um she you might remember she sang at my mom's funeral um but she, I always sat right next to her in chorus so I said I have to sit next to you because otherwise it just wouldn't be right. And there were other people saying the exact same thing. No, no, I have to sit next to her. Um, Angie is going to sing Ave Maria as she sang um, at my mom's funeral. So that's going to be hard to take. Um, and um, so, but it was, it was a wonderful experience. We met at 1230 and did a rehearsal for about an hour and a half and then we're going to meet in about an hour and, um, you know, do another rehearsal because there are going to be more people coming that just couldn't get off kind of in the middle of the day. But they want, so they set up another rehearsal. <laughs> so um, it's, it, it's hard to tell what it sounds like when you're actually in the, in the group singing, but there were people that were out said that it, it, uh, it sounded good. So I hope it, I hope it'll um, be a tribute to, to Mrs. Kubley because she meant a lot to so many people. I have a lot of ideas for things that I want to start. I have kind of big projects that I want to start. I just haven't kind of been able to get going on them. Um, I've also been planning sewing projects, so I don't know, maybe that's why, because I'm kind of balancing the two, but I do want to get started on those. I, I have another set of mittens that I'm dying to start. I want to do Bavarian Twisted Stitch Mittens next. And I have the books and the yarn, and it's all wound and everything. I just feel like I need to finish this set of mittens up first. I'm a thumb away. I did post a podcast earlier this week that I recorded with just my sewing things. Not a lot of people have watched it, and that's okay, but I guess I feel maybe that's good that I separated them out because obviously not a lot of you are really interested in that, and that's okay. I understand you your knitters, you might not be interested in sewing. So I invite you to subscribe if you haven't already, either on iTunes or YouTube. At least on YouTube, then you can get a notification when an episode is uploaded. I know they're sort of random, so maybe that would be helpful to be able to get notified. If you like this, give me a thumbs up, and I thank you all so, so much for watching. And until I see you next time, probably next month sometime, happy knitting.